Okay, one additional thing you could do with that information, which is, okay, so why do you want to know who your relatives are? It's who you mate with, it's who you cooperate with, it's who you try to kill, it's who you take care of, it's who all that sort of thing. All of these domains. Also, it's who you pay attention to socially in terms of gossip and such. One interesting study that was shown, which was with baboons, and this was those same folks at the University of Pennsylvania, what they did was they recorded the voices. You notice this business about playing the voices of some animal in the bushes and looking at the response of everybody else is one of these standard tools. What they did in this case was the voice of two animals from that group, from that troop, and what was heard was the voice of the lower ranking animal giving a dominating vocalization and the voice of the lower ranking individual giving this terrified subordinating noise. So they obviously were not getting a terrified subordinating noise out of number one, but they had to sit around and get recordings of number two and everybody else at some point or other. So now they could put them down there and they would play this. So everybody else is sitting there and saying, what? Number four is terrified of number 27. What's going on? And what they showed was everybody paid a huge attention to this. If they were hearing number 27 was trashing number four if they weren't relatives, but if they were in the same family and there was this dominance reversal, nobody paid attention. Crazy relatives, who knows what's going on in that family. They're just squabbling. They distinguish the social implications of a dominance reversal depending on relatedness or not.